welcome to rchelp.com. I'm Tony and in the last video we pretty much put the motor in, we got the main gear put in, everything's put on and it actually looks like a helicopter. Now in the last video I did not have the blades put on here yet but I did go ahead and put them on just because they look good. The canopy, I put the little foam piece down here and the canopy is unbelievably tight. The, one, you're not going to have to worry about any vibration from your canopy messing with your gyro. But I'm kind of wondering if we shouldn't cut this piece of foam in half because, like I say, it is unbelievably tight. Now, when I left you off on the last video, I told you that I was going to be doing all the wiring and getting it cleaned up. I run the servo wires in the front straight down, and they come down between the motor and the main gear. There's a bracket here that you can mount it to, and then there's a hole here where you can put a zip tie through and run it down here to your gyro. As you can see, I'm running two satellite receivers. One's right here, the other one's right here. And as you can see, this antenna is going horizontal, this antenna is going vertical. That takes out any chance of me browning out. It takes out most of the chances of browning out, I should say. Also, whenever I had told you in the last video that the auto rotation gear was extremely tight, I fixed that as well. Basically what I had to do is I loosened the lower blocks and I put a deal in underneath the main gear and pushed up and then tightened the lower block. Then I loosened the upper block, put a wedge between the main gear and the frame up here on the top, basically right up here, and that forced everything down and then I tightened that one. I still have no shims in here and there's still no play up and down with this main shaft but it spins a hundred times more free. Now in this video I'm going to expect that you guys have all your wiring done. Uh, it's not hard to do it just takes quite a long time. What's been a simple mouse click for you guys has been hours for me. Just cleaning up wires and getting everything the way that I think they should be. Now, I'm sure you saw, I did have a Dean's plug that I soldered on here. Uh, it is coming out the top, even though on the bottom here, there is a hole for your battery wires to come out of. I opted to go ahead and put it in the top, just because I think it's a cleaner installation. So once you get all your wires run and everything, and the bind procedure is exactly the same as it would be for any other Spectrum or JR radio, uh, so I don't think I really need to go into that. If you do need some help with that, come over to the forum and we'll help you out. What we're going to get started on is all this stuff and get it set up. Now this right here, I'm going to tell you what, that is all the cable you have to plug in to the gyro and then plug into your computer. Do yourself a favor and invest in an extension because you're going to need it. I don't know, maybe you'll have better luck with it, but I wasn't able to really do much on this. They say right here to basically the anti-rotation or anti-torque correction, they want you to reverse it in the little program they give you on that little disc that was underneath the gyro. Install it on your computer and it'll walk you step by step through how to install it. Then find your anti-torque uh, anti correction and there's a little like toggle switch right over here. You'll want to flip that to where it's down or showing reverse. The English is not all that great inside this program but you'll get it. This is pretty much where we're going to start right now. Alright for the purpose of this video I've removed the landing gear that way you can see the gyro a little bit better. It doesn't matter whether you got it mounted up, up here on the anti-rotation bracket or you got it mounted down here. This procedure is exactly the same once you change that anti-torque correction. Basically the way your gyro corrects is what it is. To get into the DIR settings basically you got to push this down and plug your battery in at the same time. Some connectors are easier to plug in than others. Uh, <laughs> these not so much. The first thing you want to do, turn your radio on. On your radio, you've already set up a model. You've already selected 120 degrees, three servo on your uh, swash. You put in your name and it's on helicopter. Other than that, pretty much everything else is the same. And we'll get into setting gyros and everything a little bit later. First thing you want to do, if you're like me, is get that thing really close to plugging in. Push down on the button and then plug it in. You'll see the button lights going over like that. Just let go as it's going around. What that's going to do is it's going to bypass the gyro and it's going to go basically, it's like you are directly plugged into a receiver. That sound you hear, 
that's the motor and until you move that throttle it's going to stay here and gripe at you once you move that motor like that it shuts up i don't know if it'll shut up a little bit later but <laughs> for what i've seen it does not now i've turned the helicopter around here so that you can see this make sure you're not touching this stick it's basically like you plugged it directly into a receiver so you can check everything turn your throttle hold on you can check your pitch don't try to do that without throttle hold on check your rudder everything's working great set your radio at mid stick it's going to need to be at mid stick for these next steps according to the instructions now we're going to go in the elevator limit now elevator limit you want to make sure that stick is right in the middle push the button that green light's going to move now push it forward and then let it go back that right there sets the limits of your transmitter into the gyro as simple as that the next one is going to be your elevator reverse again push the button the light changes now what you want to do the gyro started working but just on the elevator and you want to make sure that that swash plate is correcting in the right manner if it's not then move your elevator stick up or down until it is moving in the right direction and then move on to the next step now when we hit it we're going to go in to your aileron limit once we're in there make sure all your sticks are centered no one no nothing's touching it and then move your aileron to the right and then come back that's all you got to do the right and left aileron are set up and they're ready to go now same thing as with the elevator once you click this again and that light moves now you're in the uh the reverse menu for your aileron and how the gyro corrects mine's already set up so i ain't gonna mess with it i've already shown you on the elevator now we got to do click out of it flashes everything's initialized the swash plate moves up and down three times now everything works that is all the setup you really need to do on here make sure your pots are at 50 percent uh for your aileron and elevator make sure your wires are out of the way nothing's touching the motor like these wires right here are getting pretty darn close we're gonna zip tie them little puppies up out of the way and that's pretty much it on the setup of this other than going in and reversing that one menu if you have your gyro down here once you're done with that you've unplugged the helicopter you've turned off your radio that's all that there is to really setting up that gyro the next thing is going to be setting up the tail now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the limits of the tail first thing you got to do turn your radio on make sure your throttle hold is not on and make sure your throttle is down plug the helicopter in like you normally would see the gyro initialized moving in the swash plate tells you that everything's already done now what we want to do is we want to check the rudder endpoints now on mine i've already got my endpoints set up if you're just doing this for the first time this thing is probably going to be bending like crazy i'll go ahead and flip into rate mode that way you can see there i'm pretty sure that you can see right here that's the ball that's on there for the linkage for the tail now what we need to do push and hold that button for about two seconds it'll go in that light will turn green now what we need to do is we need to push that button until we get over here to limit see the light moving there once you're in your limit grab your rudder stick move it left until you hit the end then let go and then move it the other direction until you're at your end then let it go push the button that should set your rudder limits now as you can see gyro is working everything is golden in my case i gotta put my landing skids back on but that's it to setting up this gyro now this is just basic simple settings this is not in depth going into the computer and doing all that stuff this is just to get this thing in the air so guys i hope you learned something today about how to get that gyro set up it'll take you a little bit to get it done and i know some of the steps are confusing if you guys need any help with it come over to the forum and sign up post up and let us know what exactly you need help with and we'll walk you through it step by step once you do that gyro a few times it'll become second nature and it's not going to be any sort of a problem but those first couple of times it's a royal pain in the next video we're going to set up the blade pitch i would do it in this one but it's already starting to run pretty long 
So guys, if you need any help at all, uh, come over to the forum, let me know. And it doesn't matter what you need help with. Cars, trucks, helicopters, airplanes, hovercraft, you come over. We'll help you out. I look forward to seeing you guys on the forum. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.